Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen in me. Alleluia. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I have to tell you, I plan on doing a lot of swallowing a little later today, swallowing up some Easter goodies, maybe having an Easter feast to break that Lenten fast that's been going on. It's a good time to be doing that today. But as great as our joy, as much as we might plan on swallowing today, our feasting is nothing compared to the Lord's. For on this day, Isaiah says, he swallowed up death forever. The death that swallowed us up, the death that wanted to devour us, that death that's been around ever since that fateful day when Adam and Eve ate the one thing they were forbidden to eat from. Now that death is swallowed up. It's devoured by our Savior. Alleluia. The life of our Lord's resurrection has completely engulfed and eclipsed it. Death's power is now dead. God had promised it. Isaiah had prophesied it. And now Jesus, he's done it. And the angels announced to the women who were at the tomb that day, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where he had laid. Well, that was just too much for the women to swallow. No, come on, really, where is he? In other accounts, we have Mary saying, where have you put my Lord? Where's the body? I'll take care of it. They're saying basically, you didn't throw him in the trash like you did with the others, did you? Just tell us. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Trembling and fear. You know, that pretty much describes our world today. At least our world for these past two years. The women trembled and feared because there was a body they could not find. The world trembled and feared for a virus they could not see. A virus that was swallowing people up by the thousands. And there was panic and there was fear and there was doom. The women went to the tomb. Today, people still stay home, hiding from death, lest they be swallowed up. Because that's what death does. It swallows up. Bodies can be swallowed up by flames or by the earth. Friends, family, loved ones taken from us suddenly. A newscaster made this bold announcement in the midst of COVID-19. They said that the virus brought the world to its knees. But that was already happening here. In the church, that is. We've been in our knees in prayer for years. On our knees in worship. On our knees before our King. To whom we owe everything. Not only our lives, but every one of our breaths. You see, we already know about death that we all are going to die because the wages of sin is death. So this virus was different, but not really anything new at all. Just another way to inflict the consequences of sin. But you see, the world stands so bold and so proud, boastful of all the human achievement, defiant of death. thinking that they are their own God. So this year was frightening to them, just as frightening as that Easter morning was to these women. Never before in our lifetimes 
although certainly it's happened in the past. But not in our lifetimes had death seemed so large and powerful. Oh, there's been wars, but those have been somewhere out there, localized away from us in other countries. There's been natural disasters, again, localized, often not around us, but localized, not worldwide. And there's been terrorism, but only in certain places. But this was everywhere, and it was unpredictable. And it seemed to be so arbitrary, taking young, taking old, taking wealthy, taking poor, swallowing people up everywhere. The world saw death, and they trembled. And no amount of sweet-smelling flowers or pious sayings could make it better. But there was one who could, not a researcher or a scientist, but a savior, who came to swallow up death forever. So when this virus emerged and started saturating the world, the church was uniquely ready for it. Oh, death, we're ready. We know death, but even more, we have a savior that swallowed up death. And in baptism, you've already died and risen in him. So when death arises, we're good. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. That's how St. Paul put it. We are a child of God. We are possession of the Lord. Whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's possession. That's the confidence we need. That's what can get us through the world and this life so preoccupied with danger and death. Because as bad as these last years have been, and the reality is even though it seems so bad, so prevalent, did you realize that COVID was the third cause of death? Not the first or the second last year? It was only the third leading cause of death. And until it's rendered useless or moot by weakening itself for herd immunity, kind of like it's doing now, or vaccinations or whatever, whether it's gone or not, there still will be death. And it will still have to be dealt with. But you see, it was. It was. That's the good news proclaimed today. That is the feast of victory for our God that we just sang about. Or, or this passage, oh, where is your sting death? We fear you no more. Christ rose and now open his fair Eden's door for all our transgressions. His blood does atone. Redeemed and forgotten, given, we now are his own. Another one of our hymns. Oh, there was death. There's always been death. But St. Paul talks about over 500 people witnessed the resurrection of our Lord. 500 people saw the victory over death. Saw Jesus, who once hung on the cross dead, now walking around. And some of them later would face a horrible death themselves by sword or fire or beast. Those were the early Christian martyrs. But in Christ, they were ready. Oh, death. Yeah, we're ready. We know death. But we have a Savior who has swallowed up death. So death, do your worst. We're good. And so are you. For on the same mountain where Jesus swallowed up death forever, he also prepared for you a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, a rich food full of marrow of well-aged wine, well-refined. Isaiah describes that in such scrumptious terminology. 
It brings joy and gladness to the heart. Of course, you know it better by another name, the Lord's Supper. There's no other food or drink for a believer than what we receive here. No better food. The bread of life, the cup of blessing, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, the medicine of immortality, St. Augustine called it. Food that gives forgiveness and life and salvation. Food that gives us Christ's victory over death. Yet this food also points to the feast that awaits us in the future. The marriage feast of the Lamb and his bride. There'll be no tears, no sadness, no death, only joy and gladness in life. But you see, that's already yours now. Not fully realized. The best is yet to come. You see, the women eventually did get that, though they left the tomb trembling and in fear. And your reaction might be the same, too. The news of the virus first spread and started killing people and infecting people. It was like that veil of knowledge that was over the women. Like sin being over all people. But you see, that's okay. Christ doesn't expect perfect Christians. He comes to the imperfect cries of people with his perfection and his forgiveness. He comes when you're weak to give you strength. He comes to those in fear to give peace. And when we're bowed down, he lifts us up. When we don't know what to think, he gives us his word that we would know the truth. When faced with uncertainty, he gives us his promises that we be certain and sure and confident in him. The angel that spoke to those women in the tomb that morning did that. He pointed to Jesus' word and promises. This is just as he told you. Now go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. They who receive the good news are to go and share it with others. Then death is defeated. The tomb is empty. Jesus swallowed death up. That's our message too. That's our message to a trembling world. A world full of fear and no direction. It's our message every time death appears. Every time it rears its ugly head. Every time there's someone laying on their deathbed. Yes, death, we know you, but we're ready. We're good. And you can be, too. For Jesus' victory is for all people. And maybe, just maybe, these women were transfer, transformed by that news. The disciples later were transformed by that news as well. And they couldn't help but tell everybody about it. The word and the spirit working in their hearts. Making them into the person God wants them to be. So when you're fasting, pardon me, feasting today. When you're swallowing down lots of good stuff and rich food. Just remember who feasted first today and what he feasted on. He swallowed your death forever to give you life forever. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, <clears throat> may May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.